Right, uh, this Japanese aluminium foil ball thing, there's so much science involved in it. No one else is, uh, when I've looked up on YouTube, no one else seems to have delved into the science, so I thought I would, I'd tell you about how the physics works. Here's the aluminium foil that I'm going to use to create the Japanese aluminium foil ball. Nip it. Then it will ball. See, if you don't start it off as a ball shape, it's not going to turn into a ball shape. So, here we go. Let's see how much I've got on here. It's amazing how much is actually on here. Thirty meters. And there we have it. Pretty big, isn't it? What the barnacles? Bigger than me head. Right. So the first thing that I'm going to tell you about is density. Density equals mass divided by volume. Or we say rho, which is like a wiggly p. Uh, equals m divided by v. So you can see, well, the mass at the start, right now, is going to be the same as the mass at the end. I'm not going to lose any of the mass. So the mass will be the same. So density is going to rely on volume. So as I start to hit it with a hammer, the volume is going to get less and less. So the density will start to get bigger. So I'll come back to that at the end. Right, so here's the, the tools for the job. I've got this little hammer, normal size hammer, and then I've got little Timmy. <laughs> Force equals mass times by acceleration. So acceleration is the force divided by the mass. If I use the same amount of force each time to pull the hammer down, then depending on the mass of the hammer, that will determine how much I can make it accelerate. So this little thing, um, it's only got a small mass. So my force is going to make it accelerate very quickly. This thing, it's got a slightly bigger mass. So my force is not going to make it accelerate quite as much, but still accelerate quite a lot. For this thing, little Timmy, he's quite heavy. So my force is not going to make him accelerate as much as the two other hammers. The next bit of science is momentum. Momentum equals mass times by velocity. So the mass of this hammer times by how fast I can hit that, that will give me the momentum. Now if I use this hammer, because this hammer has got more mass, it's going to have more momentum. And if I use this bad boy, that is going to have a lot of momentum. Once you build up the momentum, it's difficult to stop. Tied in with momentum is the impact force. Impact force equals change in momentum divided by the time taken for the change. So if we take the mass of this hammer multiplied by the velocity of the hammer, then the time taken for that change in momentum to happen, that will determine the impact force. So you can see at the minute, this is quite spongy. So the amount of time that it's taken for this to go through whatever momentum it's got, to a momentum of zero as it stops. The amount of time that it took for that to happen that will cause the impact force. Airbags have been invented so that your change of momentum happens over a great amount of time. So that decreases the amount of impact force. Now I'll tie this in with pressure. 
pressure is force over area. Now, it's a big force that I'm using, but it's over quite a large area. Little Timmy has got a larger area. So the pressure is not that big. I don't want to go and start squashing the ball. If I was to use that, all right, that hammerhead has got a small area. If you've got a small area, that creates a large pressure. Think about someone with stilettos standing on your feet. Their force is concentrated in a very small area that's going to act like a knife. Whoa, look at this. Very small area on the edge. So all the force is concentrated in that tiny little area that creates a big pressure. And when you're cutting, uh, cutting tomatoes and stuff like that, that's, that edge there is a, it's a very small area on the tip because it's been sharpened a lot. The force of me chopping is going to be concentrated so I get a big pressure so that means I can cut through my tomatoes nice and cleanly instead of just, you know, if I was to try with that end where it's a lot wider of area I'm just going to end up squashing my tomatoes flat No one likes squash tomatoes If I was to hit it with the same sort of force now that force is concentrated in a smaller area so you can see I'm getting a higher pressure and that's why it's denting the ball a lot. But if I keep doing that, I'm going to make the ball misshapen. So I'm going to go back to using little Timmy. Work done equals force times by distance. Or we say WD equals F times by D, where WD is the work done. Also remember, WD equals the energy transferred. So you could say E equals F times by D. My force multiplied by the distance that I make that move that'll tell you how much work I've done so if we say well, that's that there my force bonk I probably just made it flatten by about three centimeters so turn that into meters multiply that by my force and that'll tell you how much work I've done the law of conservation of energy basically means the energy that you put in has to equal the energy that you get out in this case, it's the gravitational potential energy at the start of the hammer is going to equal the kinetic energy of the hammer at the end. So, what is the gravitational potential energy? Well, if you take the mass of the hammer multiplied by the strength of gravity on this planet, which is 10 newtons for every kilogram of mass that you've got, and multiply that by the, the change in the height. So if I'm starting up here from one meter high and it's coming down, but if the law of conservation of energy says energy in equals energy out, then the gravitational potential energy that this hammer had at the start is going to get turned into some other kind of energy. So what kind of energy? Well, it's going to get turned into kinetic energy as it starts to fall down. Kinetic energy equals a half mv squared. That's a half times by the mass times by the velocity squared. Now if the law of conservation of energy says energy in equals energy out, so the energy in is uh, the gravitational potential energy at the start and that's coming down and getting turned into kinetic energy well look the hammer's not moving now so where's the kinetic energy gone well it gets turned into sound but then you ask yourself this question the sound doesn't last forever does it so where does the sound energy go do you know what sound energy is sound energy is a vibration uh, of particles it's where one particle bumps into another particle and all those particles bump into each other dun, 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 and goes into your ear that's on your eardrum and your eardrum vibrates and that's how you hear sound now the air particles don't vibrate forever because the sound doesn't happen forever so where does it go? the sound energy eventually gets turned into heat as one particle rubs into another particle you get a tiny amount of friction what does friction cause? sound but also heat now that heat dissipates out into the surroundings dissipates that's a posh word so basically the surroundings get hot let us tell you about reflection a rough surface causes diffuse reflection where the light might come in in a nice straight way 
but it's hitting off a surface that is at different angles and therefore the light bounces off at different angles. So you can't see your face in there because the light is being diffused. But the more that I hit this and the smaller that I get it and if I start polishing it up it's going to end up being smoother and smoother. And as the surface gets smoother and smoother I get a more specular or regular reflection. I'll show you that in the lab. Right, that's enough science for now. Now it's just time to start smacking it. Okay, so here we go. Get the momentum going, let the hammer do the work. Let the hammer see the foil. It's getting more and more dense all the time. It's the same mass, but it's getting there. Uh, that mass is getting squeezed into a smaller volume. Right. I'm going to change onto this. Concentrate that force in a smaller area. That creates a larger pressure. Make sure you watch your fingers. Smackity smack, smack, smackity smack, smack smackness. Remember to work hard and be nice. This is the work hard part. Alright, someone said it takes about four hours. You're not kidding. I don't want year 11's doing this, mind. You need to be revising. Let me waste my time. Oh, I'm in strike now. One, two. One, two. One, two. Remember, if there's ever anything in life you can't do, it's just because you haven't got the right technique. As soon as you get the right technique, you'll do whatever you want to do in life. Find someone in life that's getting the results that you want, start doing what they're doing, and you'll start getting the results that they get. The only thing is, is if you don't do the be nice part of work hard, be nice, they won't share their secrets with you, will they? Getting smaller? Are you sure this is going to work? Right, I think that's, I'm quite happy with the size of that there. Uh, I could start polishing it next. But there are people whose videos are designed to get it right down. The purpose of my video is to just go over the science. So I'm not going to keep on going right the way down. Now here's the completed ball. Now uh, that's uh, pretty decent that. If I was to polish it up, it would be obviously a lot better. Right. So when you polish this ball, what you're doing is you're making the rough parts smoother and smoother all the time so at first you couldn't see your reflection in it because that was um, diffuse reflection once you polish it it becomes specular reflection here I'll show you what I mean so that's the surface so uh, which has got these little pits in and little holes now it's just like when you're polishing your shoe you use some wax and what it does is it sort of fills in these little gaps okay when you're hammering that and when you're polishing it's like you're filling in all these little gaps until eventually it becomes flatter and flatter now you can't actually polish your shoes until you can see your face in it and on a microscopic level this is what's happening so now that that's nice and flat like that when light comes in The light bounces in like this. I'm going to go in depth with that is angle I. And then when this one comes out, that would be angle R, which would be the same. And basically, the light is going out at the same angle at which it's coming in. And what that is, is that is your specular reflection. So you'd start to see your face in it. And you need to know that. 
for the exam board as well. They do with reflection. Always remember to put arrows on all of the lines. Right, that's, there's loads more amazing physics that I could talk about, but the, phys the video has already gone on for quite a while, so I'm just going to leave it there. Will be smash. Will <laughs> be smash. I didn't mean for you to smash all that. Well, I thought you said it was all right.